Hello everybody, my name is Richard and I'm standing in the rain at the motorway services. Uh, but what I want to do, I've just got one of those opportunities where I want to do a little bit of a comparison. Um, I'm happy to be with a Tesla Model Y standard range LFP battery and I'm also with a Tesla Model 3 standard range LFP battery. And we just have to be doing the same journey next to each other in the same conditions, very wet, at the same time, at the same speed. So it's a really good opportunity to get a direct comparison for efficiency. How much more efficient is a Model 3 compared to the Model Y? Well, we'll be able to find out in a minute, but I'm going to get out of the rain. I'll tell you a bit more about it. Don't forget, before we get into this video, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Then you'll see all the latest videos as they come through. Loads of EV stuff, really useful. Welcome to British summertime. Okay. So, uh, yeah, a little bit impromptu in this video, but it's just one of those opportunities which I like to make the most of where we can see exactly what the difference is. So if you're thinking, do I get a Model 3 or do I get a Model Y? Uh, well, at least we can test what the efficiency difference will be between two very similar cars. Uh, the Model 3 is a year old, we've got 38,000 miles. The Model Y is about four months old, 4,000 miles, so it's a younger car. But the Model 3, you'd expect it to be more efficient than the Model Y. It's smaller and lighter. They've both got the LFP battery both standard ranges, both rear drives, both with the aero covers, both in blue. So they're really quite similar. Uh, so let's see what we get. We should find that this is a bit more efficient. I do also have the long-term overall efficiency. So aside from this trip, the long-term efficiency for this car since it was new actually, uh, and then the same for the other car. So we can see what we get for this direct comparison now. And then we'll also talk about the long-term efficiency of each one as well. So trips reset pouring with rain uh, we're not doing the longest journey in the world we're only doing about 30 40 miles actually so uh, but it'd be a chance to just do that side by side same speed same conditions and see exactly what they get so let's head off look at that weather One trouble we're having here with this video is this side-by-side -side comparison is that when we picked up the Model 3, it hadn't been driven yet in that day, the Model Y we had it driven there. We drove this for a while first, so they've both been driven and we stopped at the services. However, we're just taking a while to get the battery up to temperature. So this is still with a slightly colder battery. Uh, and I can tell because there's a dotted line with limited regen. So I'm a bit concerned that this would be slightly colder batteries. I think these LFP batteries take quite a long time to build up their temperature. And we're limited in time today. We can't drive for hours and hours just to get the same thing. So I'm a bit concerned that this is going to be a disadvantage because it does have an, a colder battery to it. And the weather's been horrendous. <laughs> the efficiency figures I've seen so far aren't brilliant. It's just starting to stop raining now. So we might see, uh, we've seen this efficiency coming right down from well over 300 watt hours of Mars and well under 200 now. But what we do have for both cars is their long-term efficiency. So we can see at least what they're like. But nonetheless, we'll see what the comparison was. This was driven before that journey, but that was driven more. And this has taken a long while to come up to temperature. So I think that's a trait of the LFP. And I've been driving the Model 3 long range a lot recently in this temperature, which shows 11 degrees outside at the moment. That would be straight up to temperature. Well, not restricted, it would still be kind of efficient. I think the LFPs are just struggling to get to a much warmer temperature than the long range batteries. So that's my thought. sure if you will need to buy a Model Y or a Model 3. I'm going to talk through some of the practical differences in a minute, but uh, you can see how bad the weather was. <laughs> We've brought them inside here so I can talk to you about the efficiency and real world capable range in those atrocious conditions on our drive this afternoon. Uh, so the Model Y on that journey averaged 278 watt hours per mile, about 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. It's certainly capable of doing better than that and its long-term efficiency shows better than that. So I'm gonna come on to the very long-term efficiency in a minute, but this was just on that journey side by side. However, the Tesla Model 3 
even though this started out with a colder battery, these LFP batteries do take a little bit to warm up compared to uh, the other long range batteries, but this still managed to do 254 watt hours per mile, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So it is still more efficient than the Model Y, which you'd expect really. It's uh, obviously lower, smaller, lighter, more aerodynamic, one would say. So both cars actually in those conditions, I don't think did too bad at all. What would that give for real world range? Well, if we take uh, each one of these having a LFP battery, uh, this one actually is a 21 plate, might be a slightly smaller version of the LFP, but let's say the newer ones in 2022, 23 have got uh, 60 kilowatt hour gross batteries, 57 usable. The Model Y would have a usable range in those bad conditions today of 205 miles. Uh, the Model 3 in those conditions, 225 miles. So still both over 200 miles, even with the smallest versions of the batteries of the models currently available. So let's have a quick look at their very long-term efficiency on these cars though. So that takes out the equation today's atrocious conditions and takes into account both summer and winter use. Let's have a look. So this Model 3 in its uh, fairly short lifetime has actually covered nearly 39,000 miles. And we've got the average efficiency for that whole time. So year round, short journeys, long journeys, everything. 221 watt hours per mile. So it's better than four and a half miles per kilowatt hour as an average, all round average. And I think that is spectacularly good. And this is where these Model 3 standard ranges really are efficient, really are impressive. And probably overall the most efficient EV you can buy. Some other cars get pretty close for a round town driving, but when you mix everything in year round in different conditions, including the high speed driving, I think it's probably hard to beat one of these. It really is probably the cheapest car per mile to run. So the Model Y, to be fair to this car, this was new at the end of December. We're now at the end of March. So this has really been cold weather months and we've had some pretty bad weather in this, this quarter. So uh, this average though, over 3,741 miles, is 244 hours per mile. So less than we achieved today in the bad conditions. And I think that's a good average. It's over four miles per kilowatt hour. So for, again, a car this size, I think that is really impressive. It's just a bit behind the Model 3, which is what we've seen today but a really good overall average, and again, very cheap to run at uh, that kind of efficiency. Now, when I had a Tesla Model Y long range, my longer term average was something like 279 odd watt hours per mile. So you can see a difference there, 244, 279, both capable of more efficient, less efficient, but those are roughly the average efficiency, and that isn't bad at all. So efficiency aside, if you want to see how they compare directly for practicality, I'll give you a quick run through. This is the front space of a Model 3, and this is a Model Y. It's deeper. I'm six foot. This is me sat in the Model 3. Comfortable, good visibility. And this is the Model Y. All identical, right? Pretty much. I'm just sitting a little bit taller off the ground because we've got this kind of space in here, so my feet are just down a little bit more, and I feel like we've got a little bit more height to the windscreen as well. So this is me behind my front seat in the Model 3. I'm in, but my knees are quite high. You can see this gap between the seat and the floor is minimal. I can't really get my feet under the seat in front. It's a little bit intrusive on headroom on the side, but above my head is okay. So it's fine, it's not too bad. And this is the back of the Model Y. You can see my knees are lower down. I've got a greater height between the floor and the seat. Knee room's good, and I can get my feet under the seat in front so I can move them around a bit more. Again, a little bit more headroom and not quite as intrusive along here. This is a luggage space on the Model 3, so it's big, it goes a long way back. And the seats fold down, and there is storage underneath as well. But of course, it's Achilles heel, it's a fact it's a saloon, not a hatchback, so you're limited by the opening. And of course, the Model Y also has folding seats, has an even bigger boot, easier access, much greater entry, and also some storage under the boot, which is even deeper. So Model Y, Model 3, which do you go for? Well, it's really down to the practical needs that you have. If you don't need the sheer practicality of the Model Y, you don't carry rear passengers too often, you don't need that hatchback practicality, the Model 3, is the more efficient one to run. A little bit more kind of sporty handling feel about it, it's also a bit lighter as well, but they're both very efficient cars, very cheap to run, obviously very similar to drive really, and both fantastic, both with a Tesla supercharger network as well. So both brilliant cars, just depends on your practical needs really. If you don't need the practical to the Y, go for the three. If you want a bit more space, go for the Y, simple as that. Thank you for watching, hope it's been a useful video. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed to the channel. A lot of our viewers are not, so hit subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications, and we'll see you in another video very soon.